Hello, it's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, and tackle your own to-do list. Welcome to another episode of Just Ask Bob Live. I am your host, Bob Asadorian. Right off the top, this show is interactive. Send us your emails at askbob at cable14.com, Twitter at Just Ask Bob, or if you're old school, Bob certainly is, pick up the phone and call 905-645-3232. However, save those calls and questions until the second half of the show. First half of the show, we kick it off with rental footage from one of my past job sites in response to answer a viewer's email home improvement question. After that airs, second half of the show, Bob's here, he's live in studio, well and prepared to take absolutely all your home improvement questions. You can hit Bob with a question on the rental that you watched, or you can hit us with anything practically from the foundation to the rooftop and everything in between. Have an issue with your contractor, current or past? Did he run off with the deposit? Was the work not clean and neat? Was there any types of issues? Call those questions into the program as well. Just Ask Bob Live has two goals in mind. That's never changed for over a decade right on this very network. Number one, to get you motivated, to get you up and off the couch, to tackle that ever so growing to-do list around your own home. That's important. This is a teaching show, home renovations. Every single episode, we're gonna teach you something. Now, goal number two, equally as important. If for whatever reason, you're unwilling to get up and get off the couch, maybe the ladder's not tall enough to reach the roof, maybe it's a safety issue, maybe you just do not have the time, that's fine. So what's your only other alternative? To hire a contractor. Bob, on this episode and every future episode, will work his hardest to demystify the process of hiring what I like to call the right contractor for you and your own home. Now to kick that lesson off with lesson number one, there is a license for our municipality of Hamilton and there are licensing for a great many other municipalities in the province of Ontario. In a moment now you should be seeing Bob's license up on the screen because the host of this show, unlike reality television, Bob's actually licensed. So I'm not just going to preach, I'm going to preach from the background and the foundation of having a license myself. Now, why is the license important? Let's give you an example. Yesterday, the person that you may be hiring could have been pumping gas at a gas station or making subs at a sub shop. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as they keep doing what they're trained to do. Once they cross that boundary and want to enter your home, take your money, do renovations, there's a different story, at least in our municipality. The licensing is critical. I'm going to run through some of the important items real quickly. Number one, City of Hamilton, no chance of even writing the license exam unless you pass a police clearance. So that speaks for itself. This contractor may be in your home from well before you leave for work. He may still be there after you've come back from work. You have family, you have valuables, that speaks for itself. Number two, right behind me, Ontario Building Code book. Two hour exam on the building code, that's critical. And then the city's gonna ask for proof of minimum two million dollars liability coverage in the event there's an issue. And the important thing is this is a database now. If you have an issue with this contractor, you have somewhere to complain to at the municipal level with the building department. That's critical, that's important. Let me give you a quick scenario of the other, the other end of the spectrum. What I like to refer to as the grumpy contractor or the unlicensed, crooked, illegal overcharging contractor. The fellow that when he, while he's remodeling your home, working on your property, and you ask him a question, he barks the answer. You ask him a second question, he barks louder. Take the hint, you don't want people like that working in your home. So it's very, very important. Now, every single week's episode is based on a viewer's question. I cannot continue these episodes without your questions. Today, we're gonna to kick it off with a specific email that came in, which precipitates the rental footage. Bob, I called a plumber and he wants $200 to replace my Moen faucet cartridge. Can you please do a show on how to replace the cartridge? This is from Tim in Ancaster. Tim, thank you very much. Now, right off the bat, nothing wrong with the $200. Again, let's take both ends of the spectrum here. If the fellow's unlicensed and overcharging, 
By overcharging, I mean anything over a penny. No license, you can't charge money. So in that, in that event, if he's charging you 50 bucks or he's wanting to do it for beer, then he's charging you too much. A licensed contractor with a legal infrastructure in place with cost to operate a business, charging $200 to come in and do that is well, well worth it. But we're gonna teach you how to do that yourself. Now, there is a tool to use, but again, this is a DIY show and I wanna save your money. The oldest cartridge that I've ever replaced on a job site was probably 17, 18 years ago. I managed to get that cartridge out without the need for the specific tool made by Moen. So you can save yourself some money here. But just so you know, because you're gonna see in the footage that that thing uh, gave me a struggle. Uh, Bob struggled on, on air there on camera trying to get it out. It can be removed. So again, you gotta remember when you buy Moen, keep the receipt. In most cases, the big box store where you bought it from, you can go in there any time of the year at all, doesn't matter when it is because it's unconditional lifetime, show them the receipt, they're gonna hand you a brand new cartridge in the bag. The cartridge is the heart and soul of that faucet. There's really nothing else that can go wrong with it. I mean, a shower head's a shower head, the fit and finish might wear out, but in the case of Moen, I still yet to see the fit and finish wear out. So once they hand you that cartridge, you now need to know how to safely and properly replace it. We worked hard to put this footage together for you. Enjoy the show, and please remember, right after the footage, so now, get your questions ready. Email them at justaskbob at cable14.com, tweet at justaskbob, or preferably, pick up the phone, 905-645-3232. Hit Bob as hard as you can with all your questions. Enjoy the show. We have quite a selection of faucets for you here. Everything in this screenshot's kitchens. Different colors, different designs, anything your heart can desire. And of course, that your budget can afford. More kitchen faucets here. You know, some of them aren't cheap. These things started about $150 and easily worked themselves to well over $500. Top right corner, you can see we're getting into the shower heads now. The black is beautiful. Again, it depends on your decorating. Generally, you'll match the finish for the vanity for the, to the shower. If it's in the kitchen and you got a hot water dispenser, you want to match that as well. Bathroom faucets now for the vanity. Lots more here to show you. And I've said this many, many times in the past. When you cut the crooked and overcharging contractor out of the equation, you save. Reinvest that money back into your home with the highest quality faucet you can afford the highest quality you can afford, that way it'll last. Welcome to our job site. Today we're talking plumbing. We're gonna walk you through this beautiful home, all three bathrooms, and show you three different faucets. Now, number one here, we've got a Delta, and she's a beauty. Those of you that know Bob, and have been following me now for over a decade, will know Bob's only been promoting mowing. I love mowing. Ease of installation, Phenomenal warranty. Why, why do we have a Delta here that's installed by Bob? I'll explain. For this particular job, the customer wanted the detachable head. They themselves, as the homeowners, researched the marketplace and found that Delta had the best system, the best magnetic latch. Now, if you want to focus in here, Josh, come on in really tight. Let's get Bob's face off the screen here. All right, you see how it comes out? Now it's got resistance. All of the brands have a nice heavy ball underneath the cabinet to pull it back. However, this has a magnet. So I'm gonna be really, really quiet now. Focus in, Josh. Oh. Magnetic retraction, gotta love it. The finish is beautiful, it is a Delta which in honesty, I rank them right up there with Moen. Moen's still my preference, but in this particular design aspect, the magnet is absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful faucet. 
different spray functions. And this beauty even comes with a plate. So in the case where you're not mounting it in a single hole installation, it also comes in the plate in the event that your countertop does have three holes through it already. Now again, when it comes to these faucets, tons of different finishes, different quality levels. Do your own due diligence. Today's program is all about faucets. We're not gonna get too much into, into too much else about plumbing. However, equally as important to the faucet is the shut off valve. Josh, wanna do a nice zoom there, nice tight capture. This is a box top pick. It's a, it's a ball valve. And let me just show you here for the viewers at home. Quarter turn. That's off, that's on. Very, very important as you walk through your home, every fixture should have a shut off. Now the Ontario Building Code may debate that with me. As far as the code in our province, in the kitchen, yes, shut off valves are included by the builder, including a shut off valve for the dishwasher. Now as far as the ensuite or the bathrooms, no, it's not code. You will not generally, from you home builders in Ontario, or even from your contractor for that fact, unless you demand for it, you will not get these beautiful shut off valves to protect your fixtures. Toilets, yes, they're building code. Toilet, dishwasher, and the kitchen faucet for the simple reason that the dishwasher is next to it. Final item, make absolutely certain that connecting the water to your faucet. Josh, wanna focus in there please for the viewers? Stainless steel braided and flexible. Ask for them by name, this is very, very important. What's Bob got for you? Another beauty here, another Delta. Those that watch or follow me for years won't believe I'm a Moen fan. We have two Deltas and two Moens to showcase. Josh, if you want to focus in on this beauty here. Gorgeous satin nickel finish. It's a waterfall design. Customers chose it specifically for that reason. And when it comes to the availability of design choice with the waterfall, I must say Delta's the winner once again. It's trendy, it's modern. It's what all the youngsters want these days. Beautiful faucet, which Delta also includes the supply valves in it. Faucet number three. And this time she's a Moen and she's a beauty. We've got this champ right here. Elegant, clean, and it's a Moen, fully chrome. Josh, if you want to zoom in here. Nice sleek look, beautiful modern style. Again, what I love about the Moen is the fact that it is very, very easy to install. You will not get a more DIY friendly faucet manufacturer available anywhere at all. Be careful though, these faucets for a savings of 10 to $15, they come with a circular plastic acrylic handle. You don't want that. Due to the way the plate inserts in it, water and soap film will get underneath and stain it. So please, spend the extra 10 or 15 bucks and make certain that you buy it fully chrome and with a real metal chrome handle. You'll have no problems at all installing this. This particular one here, Josh, it's important. One more zoom in, nice, tight, clear zoom. I want the people at home to understand this was installed about 12 years ago. 12 years. The finish is absolutely remarkable. That's why I endorsed the Moen. The oldest Moen, just ask Bob's ever installed, was nearly 30 years ago. That faucet is still in service, and the chrome finish still looks beautiful. So Moen goes to a great effort to make high quality finishes that stand the test of time. Speaking of Moen, that's going to be our number four. Bob's in the shower and he's ready to work hard. We're going to teach you how to replace the Moen cartridge. The cartridge is the brains, or the heart and soul, as some would say, of the faucet. Indications that the cartridge is worn out, uh, continuous drips, either on the hot side or the cold side. To take care of this, first tool you're going to need is an Allen key. Josh, do you want to zoom in on that for the viewers? And you're going to need some patience. 
It fits in at the bottom. This is very difficult to loosen now, so I'm going to tighten a little bit in an event to loosen it to break the seal. I think I've got it. Now you don't have to pull the screw out completely. So every now and then, see how it's wiggling? A couple more turns. Or not. Screw just drop. Handles off. Let me set that aside. Next step is to take off this black piece, which is what the handle rides on. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. Josh, if you want to zoom in, this is a teaching show, so we're going to take a moment to show you each and every tool as we use it. Left to loosen, right to tighten. Now you have to be careful now. You want to make certain you're holding this carefully. There's a reason why we have to be careful. This particular shower does not have shut-off valves. So in the absence of shut-off valves, I'm working on this now with full pressure. I'm going to take off a couple of the components. We're going to take a quick break while Bob runs to the basement to shut off the home's water. Because if you do not shut off the main water to the home or shut off a hot and cold shut off supplying this faucet, when you pull the cartridge out, it's going to launch at you and you're going to be soaked. Make certain you keep everything intact. This is the chrome sleeve that the accessory for the hand will ride on. This is 12 years old, nobody's touched it. You gotta wiggle it off. There we go. All right, the water's been turned off, everything's safe. We also turned on a fixture in the basement, the laundry tub, because when you shut the water to the home, you want to make absolutely certain you've turned out a fixture, the lowest in the home, the water will move itself downward. Phillips screwdriver, we're going to take the cover plate off. I can't say this enough, with a couple of small hand tools, this cartridge can be replaced easily. If you save yourself probably a $200 service call for bringing in a plumber or a contractor. And the bragging rights, they go to you, him or her. Anybody can do this. The cover plate now is attached to caulking. When your fingernails aren't sharp enough, you'll need a knife, preferably an ultra. Same thing on the other side. You want to be very careful not to scratch the tile. The cover plate for the typical Roman faucet. Blue to the right, hot to the left. Set that down. Okay, now we finally have access. Now, for those at home, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, please forgive us with the camera work today. Josh is doing his best, but it's hard to get in here tight. But I want the viewers to see is this metal clip here. Josh, if you can do your best to zoom in at what I'm pointing at here with the pliers. This is a metal clip. This is the moment cartridge. Let me give you another idea. Let me actually show you the new cartridge, and then for those of you at home, you can relate to it. 
This is the mowing cartridge. If you buy a mowing faucet, keep the receipt. Mow will give you a cartridge for life. Okay, everything's about perspective here. There's the cartridge. Focus on this part here. And now, Josh, if you want to zoom in. You see? So we need to release this cartridge from inside the cast body. Sometimes they come out easily. Sometimes you fight with them. We don't have two hours on today's episode. Now what you want to use is needle nose pliers. You want to get in. Wish the ceramic tile guy had made his cut a little higher. So the two pieces separated. Bob spent hours, hours trying to get it out. You're going to get your lines with pliers. You're going to get in, squeeze, rotate to the right. It's just starting to budge a little. back to these guys and we're going to get in tighter. It's moving to the left. It's moving to the right. Actually, this is really important for the viewers. Josh, without distorting, please try to get in as tight as you can. I want the viewers to see how I'm wiggling. Alright, come on in tight, Josh. Bob's got it. I'm starting to get worried. We need another 
One hour episode to continue. This is really seized. some perspective again for those at home. I really, really want you to understand what I'm doing. So I'm toggling back and forth here. Let me get my shadow out of the way. See what we're doing. Okay. helps to wiggle it. You can see it's all coming apart. It's breaking on me. We have a winner. The rubber came off the side. So once again, this is the brains, some call it the heart and soul. This is what controls the hot, the cold, and this is what makes sure you don't drip, you don't leak. In most cases, it's the hot water that leaks, that costs you a lot of money. So this is junk. You want to make sure it's clean inside. Excellent. Again, genuine replacement for Mullen. Comes with grease. Actually, that's better. Right side up. Comes with grease. So you have rubber on the sides. You have a rubber O-ring. The grease goes all around the rubber. Let me take a moment to open this up. You see, every time I put this cartridge away in my tool belt, I seal it. I don't want uh, wood debris from the last time I was operating the circular saw to get on this. The original lubricant obviously lasted well over 10 years. Want to coat it well. I found cartridges last well over 20, 25 years. This one here probably would have lasted a little longer. But it's a good opportunity to show the viewers how to do it. You probably save yourselves $200 from calling in a plumber or contractor. This might not be easy for the viewers at home, but this cartridge has an orientation. There's a C and an H. Josh, if you want to zoom in as best as you can without distorting, cold, which is the letter C, is always on the right. Hot is always on the left. Please keep that in reference for any faucet anywhere in your home. We want to make sure that when we install it, the letter C is on the right. Okay, please focus in, Josh.
Now we go back to the pin. If you forget to put the pin back in, and you reassemble this, and you turn on the water, this baby's gonna launch. It's just gonna shoot out. Now the pin can be a little bit awkward to get in. First you wanna make sure your cartridge is seated all the way. And this tile's in the way. And you can see the size of the cover plate. This tile should have been opened up a little higher. That's why I love the needle nose. The pin's gotta bottom out. Reassembly is basically the same order that you took everything out in. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. Hope you enjoyed our rental footage. Don't forget, we're into the second half of the show and we have a call-in contest. Call in and win. One of, fifth, one of four $50 Home Depot gift cards to get you up and off the couch to tackle your own to-do list. All you have to do is call into the live show, hit Bob with your hardest question. Rental question for full contest details, go to cable 14 dot com slash bob contest we'll be right back after a quick break the hamilton chamber of commerce has been hamilton's voice of business for 175 years and now we're going digital Join us on Chamber TV every week as we discuss current business affairs, economic recovery, and local stimulus, only on Cable 14. Cancer connects us all. We all have a story to tell. I was 13 years old when I first heard the word cancer. I was living a full life. I never thought terminal cancer would be in my future. Being diagnosed with colon cancer was an overwhelming shock. I didn't think I would see my 50th birthday. I kind of had a worry that I really wouldn't be able to grow up one day. My wife and my friends kept me strong. This is me during treatment. This is me after my first clean scan. I'm back to myself again. I survived. Research, including clinical trials, helps to change the picture for cancer patients across Canada, making for more photos like these. Join Stand Up to Cancer Canada and the Canadian Cancer Society to learn more about the groundbreaking research that translates into life-saving treatments. Visit standuptocancer.ca slash CCS to learn more. Mom and Dad used to argue about everything especially about dad's drinking. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful when mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. I wanted a better relationship with dad, so I asked mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to Alateen. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or Alateen family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. We have a special guest on today, one of Triple R's finest, and I'm proud to call this man my friend, Frank Lorcella. How are you, buddy? Hey, not too bad, Bobby. How are you? Excellent, excellent. I didn't push you too hard at work today, did I? No, it was a good day. Terrific, terrific. Frank, what can I say? I need the help. I'm old. I get winded. You're going to help me read the answer to these emails, take the calls? Sure, no problem. Awesome, awesome. Let's take one here. I'll read it out, and then we'll, do, we'll take turns on them. Perfect. Hello, Bob. Faucet cartridges usually get seized and stuck in the faucet body. 
Bob, do you recommend replacing them in a certain amount of years or even pulling them out occasionally and greasing them as opposed to just replacing them once they totally fail? This is John from Hamilton. All right, Frank, this one's fresh in my head. I'll take this one. John, yeah. thank you very much for the email. Now, what you're saying makes sense, you know, regarding maintenance. However, I can tell you, you know, save your time and effort. It's not a matter of money because you're not actually having to buy the replacement cartridge. These cartridges can last, and again, it depends on the quality of your water, and that ranges, you know, the, the different areas of the city. I would not recommend taking it out to perform maintenance on it. Leave it in there. Uh, that might last for ages. You know, that might last uh, 20, 30 years, or it might fail sooner. You know, one indicator is that chrome handle as you turn it. So as you turn the handle over many of years, it starts to get stiff. You'll notice when you replace the cartridge, the handle seems very loose. It almost feels like you've got to tighten the set screw, but you don't. It's because the grease has freshly been applied to the cartridge. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Control room, can you throw that up again, that email? I'm wondering if there was two parts to that. Yeah, no, John, that's perfect. I would recommend just replace them when they totally fail. No, I mean, if you really want to, there's nothing wrong with it, but you don't have to perform any maintenance on them. Got an, oh, we've got a call, great. Mason? Hi, Bob. How are you tonight? Good, good. How are you, Mason? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I've been watching you for a while, and I, I appreciate the fact you always talk about being licensed by the city. Um, I'm, give, I'm wondering, given COVID right now, does the city provide you any guidelines or any training about going into people's homes to do your work, um, given, given the current circumstances? Excellent question, Mason. Excellent. And again, this is, this is new to me. And nothing's more important than my customer safety, my safety, my family's safety. Now, to address your question specifically, uh, my ticket, my license is the, regarding the, the trade exam board and licensing at City Hall. Have they sent Bob or any other contractors that, contractors that I know of any specific information on how to react with homeowners and clients? No, not at all. What I've learned is from reading, from researching, from the news, uh, from the constant uh, press releases from the Premier of Ontario, and a lot of it is common sense. But what I find the key, Mason, the, the key to this, Mason, is my customers being comfortable. So obviously, I, I you know, do what I have to do with showing up in a mask, social distancing before enter, even if entering the customer's home, uh, wearing gloves. The customers, in some cases, want extra level, level of protection. So on one specific job I can think back to, the only way the customer would allow us to recommence the work in her bathroom, because she sort of, uh, to speak loosely, kicked us out of the home when COVID really hit pretty bad uh, with regards to her and her family social isolating in the home. So in order for her to allow us to recommence the job, she wanted a plastic barrier set up to separate an entrance for the home for us to get to the bathroom that we're remodeling. She wanted a sanitization station set up on her home's front porch where we would clean ourselves repeatedly throughout the day during breaks and lunches it was, as we'd come in and out, and especially if we'd leave to go buy building material. So realistically, it's nothing from the city. I mean, they're great, but they haven't sent me any emails or information. This is all from the Premier's orders and updates, which I keep on top of, uh, online literature, and the most important thing, the client. It's their home. If they want me in in a limited way or fashion, or they want extra procedures, I would also recommend, though, that for future jobs with contractors engaging with homeowners, especially for the estimating process, Discuss it all. Don't start the job and then find out they want you changing your mask 10 times a day. Don't start the job and then find out they want enclosures built. Have an honest, full out discussion. Get it all figured out. And like I say, get it in writing and then you continue from there. Does that help, Mason? I appreciate your time. Pardon? I appreciate your time. Have a nice evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the call. Well, Frank, Oh, we got another one here. Okay. Hey, Bob, love the show. 
My contractor did not replace my toilet's water shutoff valve when he replaced my toilet. And now he wants more money to come back. Bob, should he have replaced a shutoff valve when he replaced my toilet? This is Carm from Burlington. Frank, I'll let you take this one. Perfect. Um, so a lot of the times when you replace a toilet, you don't need to uh, replace the shutoff valve. If it's leaking or there's a problem with it, uh, I do highly recommend to replace it. A lot of the times in the older homes, they have the turn style uh, shutoff valves. And when you go to turn them off, they leak. And then when you go to turn them back on, they leak even more. So in that case, you should replace the shutoff valve. But if it's not leaking and you're okay, you can save the extra money and you don't have to replace it. Excellent, Frank. Now let me add to that. You got that bang on. Now bang on is a difference from an employee standpoint to me being a contractor, being the owner. So let's travel back in time to some nearly 18, 19 years ago. Again, it was about being honorable and never ever overselling the customer. Not that I oversell them now, but let me give you the story. So the first toilet or two that I installed, again, it's always those shutoffs you described. They're gate valves. They keep turning and turning. Now, nothing's wrong with it. I talked to the client. There's never been a drip. Everything's great. I'm not going to oversell it. Remember, it's just a toilet. So what do I discover? There's a, there's a saying called last man that touched it. And that's the guy that gets in trouble, which has been Bob more than often. So I replaced the toilet. You know, I, I shut off the shut off, replaced the hose at least, same shut off, turn it all back on. I, I've got a paper towel under there while I'm loading up my truck, come back, check the paper towel, no drips, nothing. What does Bob get? A call within a few days, the lady's complaining. And in a different case, lady was really upset because when it comes to water drips, People take it differently. Some are kind, others get really livid. So she was very angry that there was drips there. And again, I, I explained to her exactly as you explained. You know, the saying, if it's not broken, why fix it? But she also gave me a nice saying, Bob's the last one that touched it. So obviously for customers reassurance and to keep people happy, I would go back, I would replace it at no cost. But I learned something from this. I learned now when you standard in my company at Triple R, any toilet we do, I don't care if the homeowner replaced that shutoff a year ago, my toilet installations come with a brand new shutoff valve and a brand new flexible stainless steel braided hose. It's just a matter of peace of mind and I sell it that way, I explain it that way, there's never ever been a problem. Now the person that sent in the question though, this is interesting, the contractor, Frank, I believe they want money, they want money again to come back. Yes. So, I mean, is the contractor correct in wanting money? I don't agree with contractors often, but I'll take his side. In a sense, yes, because he didn't charge to change the shutoff valve. Now, the homeowner, from their perspective, should they have to pay for it? In a sense, maybe, or yes, because, you know, why get it free? So, this simply comes down to customer satisfaction. It's the old saying of the customer's always right. But hey, not always. I'm not endorsing that exactly. I mean, this contractor can hold his ground, demand payment to come in and reinstall a shutoff valve. The homeowner may give it to him, but then the homeowner may never give him further work. So as a good business standpoint, now this is a business perspective, if the contractor wants to give in and you know lose an hour and a few bucks for a shutoff valve, he may now gain a customer or a client that's gonna hire him and hire him and hire him. That customer that I helped some long time ago, they've always brought me back as the exclusive contractor for their home. So this becomes more of a business decision than anything else. Okay, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take one more and then we'll go for break. Bob, can I reuse my eight year old flexible water supply lines when I replace my faucet? Eric from Hamilton, or Dundas, Dundas. Frank, want to take this one? Sure. Uh, a lot of the times with the older um, hoses, I find like that inside they have an O-ring, a black O-ring, and over time it'll break down and crack, and then when you go to reuse it, you'd get a leak. For how much it really costs, and you're already there, you're already taking everything apart, for the little bit of extra money, why not just replace them? 100% Frank, love it. Totally endorse you. I can't see anything else besides stay tuned. We're taking a break.
We'll be right back. Join us every day at 5 p.m. for your connection to the people, stories, and experiences on the Hamilton Network. Look to us as your source for the information shaping our community. Tune in to Cable 14 and online at cable14.com and follow us on Twitter at THN on C14. Keeping you connected to the Hamilton Network. of friends for connection, your network of colleagues for collaboration, your social network for sharing, or your TV network for entertainment. It's because you also count on your network. Learn more at networksyoucancounton.ca. Why does everyone I love Sometimes I can hide the pain When it hurts that much You don't want to love again That's why I close my eyes It's about sharing And caring It's about doing and belonging. It's about living life to its fullest. And it's about laughing out loud. We are L'Arche Canada, and we're about witnessing and sharing the gifts of all people. Learn more about us today. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. We have another email here. Bob, thank you for always looking out for senior. Bob, thank you for always looking out for senior citizens. I've watched many of your TV interviews and also read your interviews in the newspaper. You always speak of only hiring licensed contractors. I am a retired senior with very little money and I may not be able to afford a licensed contractor. Can I hire a handyman or student to do some work on my home? And if so, what are some of the potential risks? This is Marianne from Hamilton. All right, Frank, I'll dive into this, but you're gonna get a crack at it too. Sure. First off, thank you very much. Now, we sort of needed to demystify the process here. I mean, can you hire? It's your home. You can hire whoever you like. I'm not your boss. I'm just gonna lay out the information and you, as a homeowner, become judge, jury, and executioner. You do whatever you like. Now, to be clear, licensed contractors, we kicked that off in the beginning of the show. We have a license. We're legitimate. You can complain to the city about us. We have insurance. We have everything set in place. Now, handymen, it just depends now, or students. So let's address handymen. Handymen, that's an interesting word. It kind of bothers me. It always has. That could mean somebody that's handy. Uh, possibly capable, but maybe not legitimate or not insured. So for argument's sake, let's assume the handyman you're talking about is somebody unlicensed because you're speaking that you're assuming, well, it, that is correct. They're going to be much cheaper than us licensed contractors. So the handyman, what you have to say to yourself is, in most cases, he's unlicensed. He will not have contractor's liability insurance. He will not have WSIB workplace safety insurance board coverage. He only really has one thing, he's cheap. And let's hope he's competent. Now let's look at a couple of scenarios. For example, a chimney. He has to climb your roof to do some tuck pointing. Very simple, straightforward. Your money's tight, I understand, you're a senior. Let's say he charges you $500 and somebody legitimate like myself or anybody else that's licensed in Hamilton is gonna charge you $2,000. Now, and believe me, that's pretty accurate. Handyman, unlicensed students, maybe 500 bucks to climb a roof, mix up some mortar, repair the chimney. 
somebody licensed almost up to two thousand dollars now let's talk about some of your potential risks the gentleman that's a handyman unlicensed when he's up there that chimney may have some stability issues a chunk of brick may come loose could be much worse you have your vehicle in the driveway it gets damaged damage to your vehicle let's just assume it's a thousand dollars damage this contractor or handyman finishes the job you owe him five hundred dollars he owes you a thousand for the damage on your vehicle what do you think is going to happen do the math there he's not going to if you give him the five hundred you think he's going to pay him for the work do you think he's going to add another five hundred and give you back a thousand the other thing also is the WSIB that's really really important if he falls breaks his leg or worse you the homeowner are liable so please it's very very important think these things through very very thoroughly I understand troubled economic times we're gonna take a quick call now Rick. hello Rick hi how are you very good very good thank you for the call no no problem my pleasure I like the show thank you um, I'll make it as quick as I can because I know you're on a live show uh, long story short is in November 2015 we moved into a brand new house and part of the package was that the dealer would supply a side deck coming off of the side coming off of the side entrance to get into the backyard um, part of the agreement was that the deck was going to be inspected by the city uh, they did come by, they did inspect it, they did pass it. In my own personal opinion, it should not have been uh, passed by the city. And here we are in 2020, and the deck is actually failing. So I can ramble off 10 different things of what's wrong with it, but you know, some of the things that come to mind is um, the stairway that, go that leads into the back is resting right into the dirt, number one. The double beam that the joists is sit on, you know, the double beam support where the joists is sit on yes. is actually yes. sit on a double beam, but that beam is actually put in with deck screws. I don't see any hardware. I don't see any bolts. I see nothing. If you were to look at a picture of the deck right now, what you would see from on the top of it is you would actually see one of the four by four supports that is actually coming through the top of the deck. What, what, what alarms me the most is, so that structural component you described, they attach that with deck screws. Something like that's supposed to be a structural fastener, like a Simpson strong tie. Right. I don't disagree. Yeah, but I'm the, one that wanted, I'm the one that made it part of the agreement to have this deck inspected. I wanted the city here, and, they, and as a result, they came here. And uh, it, it was kind of, like, it just baffles my mind. Like, I do white-collar work for a living, but I'm pretty handy around the house. So to understand correctly, again, this was a, uh, a new home builder. You moved into the home, but you made the agreement so that they included with the purchase of the home, they have this deck constructed and inspected. 100%. Hang okay. Have you, have you reached out to your city councilor? No, I haven't done that yet. But I, I, know I, I would recommend that because I've had a few experiences that work successfully because, see, with the city officials and the inspectors, if there's an issue you have with inspections, and it sounds like this is an issue with inspections, they may not respond to you as they should, but once you bring in your city councillor, that may help. City councillors have ways of getting things done with varying departments in the city. But I want to follow up with you after the show. Uh, if you want to just uh, make a note of my uh, website, www.justaskbob.com, send me an email through the site with all your information. This is something that I want to follow up with you and give you a lot more information off air. But essentially, the first step will be you contacting your, uh, your counselor. I mean, again, you help elect these officials. So they owe you in return. Follow up with me after the show, and I'll make sure I'll try to get you some help and some answers, Rick. Okay, I appreciate that. So you just want me to send you an email then? Yeah, right? send, send me an email with all your contact information because this will be uh, quite a drawn-out process. A little too long on the show today. We don't have much time remaining. But for issues like this, I will follow up one-on-one -on -one with you and try to point you in the right directions where you can get the right doors opened to get the right answers, Rick. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Good luck.
We're taking a break. We'll be right back. My family and friends know how much I love to cook and bake. I'm so excited this season to be premiering on Cable 14 with Marisa's Easy Kitchen. Fridays at 8.30, I'm going to share with you some of my family's favorite recipes. Beautiful, fresh, delicious, simple ingredients making a wonderful meal that you can have with your family too. Cancer connects us all. Join Stand Up to Cancer Canada and the Canadian Cancer Society to learn more about the groundbreaking research that translates into life-saving treatments. Visit standuptocancer.ca slash ccs to learn more. Hi folks, my name is Amy Sloan and I'm going to be the host of a new show called Friends on 14. It's a show for our seniors. It's got music, trivia, it's got uh, exercise, and all kinds of fun stuff for seniors. Join me on Monday nights after bingo at 8 p.m. on Cable 14. Cancer touches us all, but together we can make a vital difference. Every fall, we unite for Illuminate, an unforgettable fundraiser in support of Jurabinsky Hospital and Cancer Center Foundation. This year, the magic of Illuminate will be all around us as we go virtual. On October 2nd, enjoy a twilight walk in your community. Get in the spirit by displaying a uniquely decorated pumpkin. Show your support for the amazing teams who treat cancer every day. Register and start fundraising today. Welcome to Just Ask Bob Live. Frank, what can I say? Thank you, thank you very much on behalf of myself and the viewers. We're gonna have you on a lot more. Perfect, thank you Bobby for having me on here. It was my pleasure, it was my pleasure. All right, we're gonna kick off some footage now. What you're watching now is next week's episode, a little bit of a preview. Bob takes it to brand new heights with a roofing project. We wanna show you what's wrong with this roof. Uh, big shout out to Josh Coles on the camcorder for being brave enough not only to climb the roof, but to be tied off and be recording it today. Josh, if you wanna zoom in here. What I wanna take a moment to show the viewers is some of the shingles that are coming apart. So this roof is beyond, definitely beyond its, uh, its proper use. It's worn out, it will not last another winter. That's why we're here today at Triple R to perform a brand new roofing job. <laughs> 